Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about running with stopwatches, GPS watches and GPS, GPS based apps like Strava. I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of using them, the benefits of not using them and when it's good to use them. So let's start with stopwatches. Pros of a stopwatch. So you can measure how long a run took, if you know the distance. They're good for track sessions where you know the interval length or if there's an interval training session where you know how long that is or if you want to measure your recovery or you want to just run an effort based on time. They are relatively cheap and lightweight and usually they're waterproof. They're also good for making sure you're not late for training or races. So let's have a look at the cons. They're not useful on recovery runs or where the distance is not known. If you're on a recovery run, you don't really want to be using a watch. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Uh, another con is there's no way of knowing your mile or kilometre splits unless they're marked on your route, which is unlikely. Also, most watches, stopwatches, generally don't have heart rate monitors built into them. And one of the big problems with stopwatches is because you're timing yourself, they can force you to push too hard because you're worried about your time. You're thinking, how long is this run going to take me? Maybe you're trying to beat your PB or match an average time that you're trying to get or worrying about a certain pace. So let's talk about GPS watches with or without a heart rate monitor. So firstly, the pros. You can track your distance, you can track elevation and you can track your mile or kilometre splits. Often, most GPS watches nowadays, they tend to have a virtual partner built in. Sometimes they have built in training programs to help with interval sessions. Usually you can upload your training data to your PC or a website with just a click of a button. They're usually water resistant and they also function as a watch. So let's have a look at the cons. Firstly, they're very expensive, especially if you want to buy a good one. Secondly, there are so many options to choose from. It can be quite overwhelming and hard to choose. And this is a big one. You need a satellite or satellites to connect and get a signal. Without the satellite signal, you can't track your position. And you can't track your run. So sometimes if the weather's bad or you're in a location where there's no signal, say you're in a tunnel or in a house, you might not get a signal for a long time. And it can take your GPS watch many minutes to get a signal, which holds up your run. The battery doesn't usually last very long and you often have to recharge it frequently. One of the traps that many people fall into is getting obsessed with numbers. They look at their splits, they look at their times and look at the distance and they're obsessed with making sure everything's what it should be. For example, if you run 6.9 miles, if you're wearing a GPS watch, chances are you're going to want to round that up to 7. But if you're not wearing a GPS watch, it doesn't really matter. And does it really matter anyway? And that can be distracting. If you're out on a training run and you keep glaring down at your watch, you might get distracted and have an accident. A few years back, I did just that. I had my GPS watch on, on the training run with a group in my club. And I was looking down at my watch and I ran into a lamppost. And then I ran a few more meters and ran into a lamppost again. So a consequence of this may be that you always push too hard. And maybe you never have easy days and that could lead to injury or burnout, which obviously is not a good thing. So let's talk about GPS based apps like Strava. Starting with the pros, apps like Strava are free and most people these days have smartphones. They often have great tools such as map overlays, split charts, average pace, PB tracking, things like that, which is quite useful for many people. You can share your runs with your friends or followers and basically it creates an automatic training diary without any work. So let's look at the cons. So firstly, phones are bulky and heavy and awkward to carry. You might need a big pocket or a phone carrying case or you have to carry it in your sweaty hands which isn't very nice. Phone batteries like GPS watches tend to run out quite quickly so you need to ensure your phone is charged before you run and also with that if your run is very long say you're doing a marathon training session your battery might die before you get to the end anyway. Phones have the same issue as GPS watches they still need satellites to connect Phones are usually not very weatherproof, which isn't ideal if it's raining. The screen on your phone can become basically impossible to operate when you have wet, sweaty hands. 
all your training data is in one place, which may seem good, but that does create a problem with privacy, so you have to consider if you're happy with that. And again, same as GPS watches, it can lead to an obsession with numbers, with training too hard, that kind of thing. So what do I do? Well, these days I seldom use a GPS watch or a GPS tracking app like Strava. In fact, I rarely use a stopwatch. I usually know the distance of the route I'm running and I tend to run off road a lot, which means that tracking my time doesn't really make any sense. And getting your mile splits or kilometer splits isn't always useful. If your route has many obstacles like gates or stiles or roads to cross, then the mile split or kilometer split doesn't really mean much because you probably have to stop to open it. Also, if your run's very hilly, then that's going to skew your results. A 6.30 mile downhill might be easier than an 8.30 mile uphill. And pace isn't everything. On easy days, you don't really want to take a watch. You just want to be able to relax and enjoy the run and not think about how fast you're going or how slow you're going. You don't always need a watch for faster runs either. You can just run to effort instead less distractions and things to worry about. I personally think you'll feel liberated without a watch. Also, things like fartleks, you can just run to points in the distance, like landmarks, trees, lampposts, that kind of thing, instead of time. So when's it a good idea to use a watch or GPS? Well, stopwatches are great for track sessions or intervals where you know the distance. GPS watches are not great for track sessions because they won't give you an accurate distance. The best thing to do with a GPS watch is just turn the GPS off and use it as a stopwatch. They're also useful in races where you want to track your splits, mile splits, kilometer splits, or your finishing time. GPS watches or apps can be useful if you don't know the route you're running and you want to use the map to find your way, or you don't know how far the run is and you want to measure your distance, or if you really need to get your splits. They're also great for pace specific sessions, perhaps a marathon training run, or they're also useful for when you want to use heart rate monitors. The other thing they're useful for is virtual races, as evidence. So in summary, I would say consider carefully before you go out and buy an expensive GPS watch. Perhaps you could spend that money on new running trainers or clothes instead, and that might be more useful. But I would definitely recommend getting a stopwatch. They're usually quite cheap, good for track sessions and timekeeping, but only use them when you need them. I often don't take a watch with me on my runs. I do tend to take a mobile if I go off road, but that's just for safety reasons. I hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and perhaps consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below if you use a watch or GPS while you're running. Well, that's it for now. Take care. Bye.